So the aims of this talk is essentially to kind of give us a chance to reflect on why we do what we do, um, finding our kind of personal why and the importance of it and how it kind of guides us to be better leaders. I currently am a tech ops analyst at Permitive, which is an ad tech company kind of looking to improve um, privacy with uh, data and efficiency at the same time. Um, and why this topic is so important for me is because I feel like leadership has really helped me make this transition from, I was working in events and making this transition into tech and finding my why was kind of essential in helping me do that. So we'll be exploring um, the topic of personal leadership um, in these three areas. Um, so we're gonna firstly analyze our current understanding of leadership. Um, we're gonna then understand ourselves um, how to relate to a team, and then lastly, kind of bringing it all together. So I have a quick question for everyone. Um, very simple. Um, I would love everyone to, it's like a poll, so please answer um, and just kind of, are you a leader, yes or no? Nice, nice. Perfect. So I'm going to see how many there is of us. And there got 18, I'm gonna have to do maths. <laughs> a couple more people to, to do it. Cool, um, so just as you're um, all um, completing the poll, um, I just wanted to ask this question and I wanted you to all kind of think about how you answered it throughout the talk. So did you answer this because yes, you've got a leadership a position, um, so of course you're a leader, um, and did you say no because you don't have a leadership a position at work. So I'm going to close the poll now. Um, we've got a lot of leaders in the chat, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to share the results with everyone. So it seems like we've got quite a lot of leaders and I think this will be a perfect talk for you. And if you're not a leader, again, this will be a great talk to challenge kind of why you think that. So I'll stop sharing. So. Another question I have for everybody is um, please feel free to type out or if you want to unmute and um, say, but I want to ask you all, what is a leader? So if you could just type I answer, if you would like to shout out, please do unmute yourself. Um, yep, never do the maths. <laughs> um, if anyone has any thoughts, please share. Should I pick on people? Oh, thank you, Christine. <laughs> so Christine has a lovely answer. Someone who inspires people to follow them. Judy said, someone that brings the best out, best in others. And I'll see if anyone else wants to say. Yeah, thank you, Cara, it is a complex question. Uh, someone with empathy. Isyoma said, someone who's got a plan and pulls people together. And Tony said, someone who listens. Bianca said, someone you want to follow. Um, Paul said someone that will do the doing. I absolutely love all of these definitions because I love kind of the range of ideas that people have come together to say. Um, and this is why I love to ask this question because I think often we ask, you know, the attributes of a leader, what makes a good leader? And it's, you know, understand, being understanding, being empathetic and all those things are I, really great, but it's great to actually understand what people think a leader actually is. Um, and for me, to be able to actually recognize a good leader, we have to actually understand what a leader is. And that's why I wanted to ask that question to you. So thank you so much for sharing. So I went and I had a look and I wanted to find, you know, the traditional definition of what a leader was. Um, and I found the Oxford Dictionary definition. And it said, a leader is a person in control of a group, country, or situation. Um, and as this talk continues, you'll kind of see why I love this definition so much. Um, for me, reflecting kind of how I grew up in my journey in leadership, a leader when I was quite young was someone who had this like, you know, high position of power. Um, they were kind of, to be honest, far removed from the people that they were meant to serve. Um, and I didn't really understand their purpose. So I became you know, someone that didn't really trust leadership and didn't really look to leaders to really guide myself. Um, 
And this kind of changed massively for me once I entered university. So I entered um, an organization called ISEC. Um, ISEC is a youth run organization um, that work to promote leadership in youth and also cross-cultural understanding. And when I was there, I met so many amazing young leaders. It really changed my perspective and made me kind of understand a bit more about leadership. And seeing all these amazing leaders made me really reflect and think, how can I become a great leader like this? How do I unlock my inner leader? I looked at these people around me and what I saw they had in common was that they had a really great understanding of themselves and of their motivations. They really had an ownership of what they were doing and that allowed them to bring the best out of others. They knew their strengths, their weaknesses, but most of, importantly, they understood motivations and this allowed them to connect really easily with others. So I did a lot of reflecting what were my strengths, what were my weaknesses, and I found that that was kind of a, a really easy thing to understand. You kind of ask people, what do you think I'm good at? You know, you reflect yourself, what am I not great at? But the harder part was actually finding my inner motivation, what kind of keeps me going day to day. So it led me to think, why do I do what I do? And that led me to kind of understand this art of why. So I say the art of why is your source of intrinsic motivation. What keeps you going day to day? What makes you get up in the morning? It can be anything. It's always wholly personal. It's something that can give you hope. It drives you. Um, and because we, were ev we are ever changing people, it can change. And what I really love is it can really allow you to enjoy the journey, which is a very difficult thing to do. There are many different frameworks for you know, finding your why, your source of intrinsic motivation. Um, and I'll cover kind of how I first come across this idea of a why, and then I'll later cover what I actually used in my difficult times and what actually helped me transition myself into tech. Ultimately, what you're trying to just do is find something that drives you in these most difficult moments. So the first, um, framework that I came across was this golden circle by Simon Sinek. Um, some of you may have seen this before as well, or you may have heard of Simon Sinek. So often what we do when we're kind of faced with a difficult challenge or we're trying to move up in life is we know what we're going to do and we know how to kind of get there. So for example, I want to become, you know, a senior software engineer. I know what I need to do to get there is that I need to hit all of these deadlines and, you know, someone will kind of give me the stamp of approval. But the issue is we don't always know why we're doing this. And this can kind of be really difficult during these hard times. You know, what happens when you don't make this deadline and things just aren't looking up? What makes you keep going? So that's why this, si this golden circle is so important because it flips it on its head and it starts with your why. What is your purpose? What do you believe in? And what is your motivation? Then you can kind of see how do you actually achieve that? And then what, what are your results? What do you actually do? This way, we kind of always have something to reflect back on when things are difficult. And even when things are great, when we achieve that goal, we actually know why we did that. You know, often some people will say they jump to one project and one project because, you know, they're kind of chasing something and they don't necessarily know why they kind of still don't feel like they've achieved what they want to achieve. By finding your why, it will help you kind of get there and understand and enjoy all of the kind of hard bits and the journey towards that goal. So the next one that I wanna talk about is Ikigai. So this is a framework that I actually use to help me kind of find my why. Ikigai is a Japanese word, essentially meaning a reason for being. So we've got Iki, which comes from the verb Ikiru, which is to leave live and it relates to daily living and then we've got guy which is kind of meaning worth icky guy and again this is quite popular and people may have seen this as well um this is icky guy in this kind of venn diagram um interpretation and i wanted to highlight that this is more of an interpretation of the you know the japanese kind of way of being um it isn't necessarily the 
be all and end all of ikigai you know ikigai can be quite complex and there's people have written loads of books on it but this is a nice representation of kind of what that phrase means what it actually means what does that word mean and so we have these four quadrants we have what do you love your passion what the world needs your mission what you're good at your vocation and lastly what you can get paid for your profession and the idea is kind of to list out all the, all the possibilities that fall into these four quadrants and kind of see how they overlap and that's kind of how you find your ikigai and your why and why finding your ikigai and your why is so important as i've said before is it really helps us to find purpose in our lives what drives us it gives us freedom in our day-to-day -day living and it really allows for this personal growth and again relating back to our leadership it makes us proactively engaged with those around us being secure in who we are it's very easy to form bonds with other people it really does strengthen these interpersonal relationships um, and so i want to kind of show this again um, and another way that you can kind of take your ikigai and evolve it is by kind of using this um, three whys um, way of kind of questioning. So when you've like listed out all these different possibilities and you've found things that overlap, when you've kind of found what your ikigai can be, you can then question why is that your ikigai and do that three times to kind of find your innermost intrinsic source of motivation. And so my ikigai has very much evolved from kind of these just quadrants and it's become kind of a phrase that I use to really help me and guide myself. And for me, it's just simply bringing joy to others. And you know, the act of bringing joy to others can be done in so many different ways, but that's ultimately what helps me, what drives me. But what I have to remember with my ikigai is that, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup and I have to be able to build myself up and nurture myself to be able to do the same with others. Um, and so having a look at this, I just, I'm very curious to kind of see, um, you know, is there anything you immediately think of when you think of like your passion or your mission? Um, I think I'm very curious about those two things, but because there's sometimes things that we can overlook. Um, so if you don't mind just shouting out or typing in the chat, kind of what springs to mind um, when you think of your passion in life or your mission in life, just to kind of get you started on your ikigai. to see nice Kara. thank you helping people i love that it's very similar to me as well um it is and and that's the beauty of it everything can be super broad um but that's what is true to yourself and that's what matters the most it can be as precise or as broad as possible but as long as that kind of helps you you know day to day then that's kind of what matters um exactly it brings joy and i feel the same way it really brings joy for me to help people um you know everyone finds beauty in the world in different ways um isyoma said writing which is really nice so i hope that this kind of gets you started on thinking of your ikigai so how to stay true to your ikigai so there's different ways to stay true to your ikigai um again when things are getting tough what can you kind of do to keep going? So one thing is keeping your why in plain view. Um, so I personally have mine on sticky notes around the house. Um, I know some people have um, it as their desktop um, screensaver or on their phones, things like that. And then you can kind of join different support groups. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean like you're jump, jumping in to find everyone with the same ikigai, but people who have kind of similar ways of thinking, similar mindset can really help keep you um, stay true to yourself. Um, when you've kind of found your ikigai and your why, um, you might want to use that Simon Sinek model of like how you're going to get there and what you do. And with that, you can kind of set these small tasks to help you get there. And then with all these small tasks that you're doing, um, you can make those public. So you can literally put it on social media because why not? It's nice to kind of reflect on what you've said before. Um, or you can just tell somebody and that can be help you to be held accountable. And then lastly, what I'd say is very important is be kind to yourself. Um, 
life happens as we all probably very much know um but Again, as you're ever changing people, your ikigai can also change. So if you're feeling like you're struggling to kind of meet something and you don't quite understand why you're doing it anymore, that might just mean that your ikigai has changed and is a way for you to now reflect and understand that. And then we've spoken about this, you know, ikigai, everything. It might sound very weird and random, but it does make sense and it does help you become a better leader. Leadership is in so many different forms. And when we talk about personal leadership, I believe that it make, it's really important to understand yourself to be able to get the best out of others. There's a really great book that I would urge people to really listen um, to, sorry, read, because it really helps to kind of understand the compassion between human beings. You know, humans are social creatures. So as much as that, we kind of, would like to get straight to the chase with things to be able to actually understand our team members we do have to kind of have compassion for each other um, and um, a book that I really love is Bell Hooks All About Love and it really talks about how we've left kind of this idea of love and we've made it just very romantic and we've left it out of kind of our everyday tasks and and in everything that we do because there should be compassion and love and kindness in everything we do because everyone deserves that and it really challenges you to kind of reflect on how do you interact with people and how do you kind of show compassion in your day-to-day -day lives because ultimately when we're able to share compassion within our group within a team we are really able to unlock so much more than we can have ever imagined and ways to like use this in your team. Um, you don't necessarily have to like ask everybody, what is your ikigai? But just allow for space to actually explore and understand everyone's goals. And this can be a broader goal as in outside of your company. What do they kind of want to achieve in their greater life? Allowing people to actually explore that in a professional setting is so important because as much as we try maybe to not have our personal and professional interlock, they really do interlock. And if you understand people's goals for kind of their wider future, it really helps to understand that person. And it shows that you actually care. Having a leader, a manager, a teammate that cares about you makes you even more want to kind of work and be put in a position to work with your team. Um, another great model that I really like is the DISC um, model. It's a really great kind of personality test. Um, you know, personality tests are never accurate, but it's quite good at kind of increasing conversation around the team and seeing how different people work. And again, allowing for teammates to relate to each other. I believe that we can only really get the best out of our team when we understand ourselves. How do we relate with people is, is determined by how we actually see ourselves. So to kind of bring it all back together and to reflect earlier on what I said about leaders, I've seen some amazing ones and some terrible ones throughout my career. Some have really misused their authority. And even with a, this idea of thought leadership, some people I may have mentioned earlier in this talk, some of them take their power and they can even use it uh, to like get what they want and use their privilege for bad essentially. But I believe that leadership is understanding the individuals in your team and getting the best out of them. And I know people mentioned that earlier, so I'm really glad that you did. And going back to this, um, definition that I mentioned and why I loved it is because a leader is defined by a person in control of a group, country or a situation. Essentially anyone can really become a leader and a con in control of their own situation. I believe that amazing leaders are everywhere but as you know the title of my talk alludes we often see them without these sacred leadership titles. It can be the lovely delivery person that's taking control of the situation to make sure you get your delivery right on time. It's the person in the call center who took control of that situation to make sure that you got the best and you your query was answered correctly and speedily. It's all the people working through the pandemic with little sleep, average pay and intense stress because they know what needs to be done and they take control of that situation. Leaders are people who really value quality 
overpower. And lastly, I'd love to leave you on this quote because I believe it represents everything I believe about personal leadership. True leaders always practice the three R's, respect for self, respect for others, and responsibility for all their actions. 